two, yeah. one. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the, uh, to uh, Inside Movies Galore. I'm your host, David Streggy, and here we have another exciting round of films for you. Um, uh, and uh, tonight, I'm going uh, to hand you over to tonight's host, Brandon. Uh, why don't you tell me what's in st uh, store for, uh, for us within this winter month? So we have the wonderfully warm-hearted 1998 Michael Keaton film called Jack Frost. Oh, wait, wait. I, I misplaced it. Sorry, I meant the 1997 um, film uh, by director Michael Cooney, uh, also by the same name, Jack Frost. Uh, personally, I think the other Jack Frost was a rip-off of this one. Uh, but that's just my personal opinion <laughs> of the matter. Um, so we, uh, I guess we'll look at, uh, we've got our typical crew here. It's been a while, so I'm a bit rusty here. Uh, we've got, of course, Dave and oh. Jake and Dustin. Eh. So we got a decent crew here with us today. So, of course, this is an interesting film where a notorious serial killer is on the way to the execution block. <laughs> when unfortunately to, for them, as he tries to escape, happenstance seems to get in the way with a strange chemical reaction happening that makes him a killer snowman. <laughs> Interesting read there. So, um... Any case, uh, I guess we'll start with you, Dustin. Is this your first watch of the film? So I think I've seen the I've seen this a couple times before. Uh, a few years ago, when I was just kind of a casual horror person and didn't quite understand what's going on here, <laughs> um, and then I saw it again. Uh, well, a little bit more background. So this is one of Vinegar Syndrome's, like, fancy release titles. And I've been kind of looking for it for a while. And I'd, I'd always meant to revisit it when I found that Blu-ray with the slipcover. And the last two or three years, they've had a couple copies with the slipcover on their Black Friday sale. And every single time, they've run out of stock while it was processing my payment. So... Sure. But thanks to Shutter and Joe Bob Briggs, I got to see it again recently. Mm -hmm. uh, it was featured on Joe Bob's Red Christmas. And it's a pretty crazy movie. Uh, <laughs> like, I enjoyed it a lot more this time. Although you can kind of... You can kind of feel the low budgetness of it. So, right. Well, oh. you, you, know, you know how it is. Low budget films, they're just um, <laughs> like candy to me. <laughs> <laughs> Supposedly, this had a budget. This was supposed to have a budget of like a few million dollars, and then <laughs> it ended up being greatly downgraded somehow. This is this is what I remember Joe Bob Briggs saying. Uh, it ended up being greatly downgraded somehow, and I think they only had like two hundred thousand, or maybe even twenty thousand, like to <laughs> to work with. Uh, but yeah, it's it's actually a pretty. It's a pretty fun crazy movie like some of the jokes are kind of like uh come on guys mm -hmm. uh, like in the we're talking the same kinds of jokes um that we got like in santa's sleigh where you know santa's like ho ho hoes and it's like ah we're doing this huh <laughs> uh and so we get like you know snowman <laughs> jokes but of course, this was, this was before Santa Slay, so I would have to say, uh, say that Santa Slay just did it better. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes, um, it's just kind of it's just an example of like the kind of the kind of writing you're in for. Uh, uh -huh. Well, actually, uh, Dave, why don't we go with you then? Uh, first good. impressions. Well, this is actually the first time I've actually seen it in its entirety. Uh, where I've just had the time to sit down and actually watch it. Um, so, uh, so, um, uh, the original DVDs were notoriously out of print, 
Um, and so is the uh, oh, yeah. syndrome, of course. But they were notoriously out of print for so many years. And then finally... Uh, the I know where you can get one in town. They were just the right price. I have them. Both of them. <laughs> I ended up uh, pick, uh, picking them up through a seller of uh, uh, some, some sort. He had a special price. <laughs> but uh, in, in any case, I um, I enjoyed it. Um, maybe, maybe more so because there's one actress in here that was actually in 13 Ghosts. And her perf uh, uh, her death to me was priceless. So <laughs> I don't know if, uh, uh, how the audience can relate to that, but in any hmm, case, that was <laughs> so weird. Oh my god! <laughs> so Joe Bob Briggs pointed when we get to that scene. Like Joe Bob Briggs pointed something out about it that I didn't notice before, and now it's kind of like fun to laugh. It's hard to laugh at now. After he pointed it out, but we'll we'll get there. Well, uh, Jake, is this your first time seeing this great classic? Yes, it was. Um, hey, it, it was is, first it time is time award seeing, season. It was my first time <laughs> seeing Jack Frost. Let's put it that way. Um, huh. And it was an interesting movie. Uh, Dustin, your point about the writing, I honestly, it reminded me. Now that you say, I agree, this is kind of similar in some ways to Santa Slay. But honestly, it reminded me of a much better draft Christmas version of uh, Thanks Killing. Just the way that the, <laughs> the, way that the, the little snod one-liners that the guy would make with each kill and that sort of thing. Nailed it. It did remind me more of Thanksgiving, but like I said, yes. obviously with a higher budget, obviously with a somewhat better grasp of jokes, uh, so <laughs> definitely with better production values. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was interesting. It was okay. I, honestly, the movie left really relatively little strong impression on first go. <laughs> Well, um, my first impression is uh, slightly different. Uh, I came across this film. I had heard about it through rumor uh, years ago. And one day when I was in Movie Stop, it was uh, back in the day when Movie Stops were all over. I think they had three locations in Richmond, which mm. was wonderful at the time. And uh, they had one off of Hull Street, which was one of the first to close. Mm -hmm. And um, I was looking through, and I saw this thing. And this is the out-of-print DVD, and it was uh, it was 99 cents at the time. <laughs> and I said, you know, this is worth 99 cents. And uh, I that, got that. Wasn't it worth $70 at some point? How Jesus. little did you know? Yeah. But... Uh, you know, I watched it. I've watched it now about six or seven times. <laughs> um, I've seen it eighty to ninety dollars at one point. So. Oh my god! <laughs> wow, so. that's sad. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've uh, I've enjoyed my watch throughs of it each time. Uh, matter of fact, I've watched it. I watch it at least once every winter. Um, and a couple of times since, and uh, I though oddly enough, uh, where I watch this in the winter, I watch the sequel film in the summertime uh, as sort of a Christmas and July type tradition. And uh, I've only watched that one about three or four times, but uh, for some reason, I like that one even better. There's something about the campy feel of the film, and I love campy B horror. I mean, mm -hmm. you can tell because I really liked Thanks Killing, and you're right on the head with that. It just it, it's just fun. As long and, as we don't start a Christmas in July tradition of Christmas vacation, too, I think we're good. Oh, good God, that, that's not fun. <laughs> I re I rewatched that over the holidays, and I realized, okay, you're right, it's still not fun. Um, but uh, then again, somebody likes it out there, I'm sure. 
Just like I know lots of people, I'm sure, love Jack Frost. Just like I do. Hmm. Um, I enjoy it. <clears throat> but uh, plot-wise, uh, we have... Uh, I'll set this up mostly... Uh, again, I try not to go all the way point by point because we end up being here all night. But... Uh, We'll look at it from the beginning because, of course, obviously the beginning is the creation. It establishes our main hero character, our villain character, and uh, what happens to our villain character. So looking at this uh, from that perspective, does anybody have anything interesting to say about the first portion of the film, that uh, introduction area? We get some really cruddy CGI that attempts to explain what's going on. Mm -hmm. So, because what happens is, so Jack's on his way to being executed, and there's some weird accident where, like, the truck crashes as he's trying to escape. Um, and he's sloshed with the stuff that appears to melt him. And then we get this really, really cruddy looking effect where we're supposed to be seeing, like, I guess blood cells oh, crystallize and those he's, like it was like melted, animated, wasn't it? it melts into the snow and it was kind of an animation computerized thing of it was a graphic white blood cells <laughs> they weren't even red blood cells they were white blood cells or some shit <laughs> yeah it was Little it's, donut looking things Actually, before we go into that, we should probably talk about the opening sequence because that was so fun. You had the credits oh, the as ornaments. And yes, you had this older person narrating to a young child who's obviously voiced by an adult. And there was some pretty creepy narration in there. It was, tell me a story, Daddy. Was, <laughs> like, well, I'll tell you a story about Jack. <laughs> Jack was a killer. He just loved it. You know, Jack was nimble. Jack was quick. Jack killed people with candlesticks. I don't like this story. Shut the fuck up and listen. What are we? <laughs> what are we listen? What are we watching? What? <laughs> What's going on? Right. They're trying to uh, bring this bride in. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I just thought that was amusing. It was uh, some of the language was incredibly graphic in that part. <laughs> it was like, what a way to start the movie. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and then yeah and the ride to the prison the dude they had playing Jack before his transformation he definitely had a pretty creepy grin <laughs> he looked he looked like evil Bruce Campbell like time shifted sort of, villain yeah. roles Bruce Campbell I was yeah. thinking that for a moment <laughs> yeah mm. This was uh, probably Campbell's evil twin or something. <laughs> I kept thinking Jigsaw from The Punisher, which uh, uh, is not one that uh, that people get to see much. It's like it's one of the few recurring villains that The Punisher would face, hmm. and he looked like he was a recurring villain of The Punisher because he looked like he was beaten all the heck uh, each time. <laughs> <laughs> And he had those kind of scars on his face and uh, mm -hmm. just his general evil nature. Very it cartoony. Also, it also reminded me, uh, I don't know if any of y'all are familiar with the group Big Bad Voodoo Daddy. That's like one of my favorite groups. And they have a, on their CD, This Beautiful Life, they have a song called 10,000 Volts. It's all about this serial killer, and it just the the last the last lyric of the song is spoken. It says the way the legend uh, the way the legend goes. He um, or no one witness said he died as, with a smile on his face, you know. And I'm just this whole scene where he's riding there. I heard that song in my head. I'm like, they were singing about a dude like this. They really were. He was so over the top evil. It was like it was almost fun to watch. <laughs> yeah, he, he was definitely the wrong one to be splashed by the uh, yes. super serum. Now, uh, I know that that's probably the one scene that you weren't able to watch when he was splashed by that. 
Give me a good opportunity to let the cats outside. <laughs> Probably the most gory effect in the entire movie, and of course, mm -hmm. that's not saying a lot. But then again, the movie mm -hmm. really wasn't all that gory if you think about it. No, it was, it was surprisingly clean, mm -hmm. um, all things considered. <laughs> um, so you know. actually, while while we're going through, I figure we could also talk about the characters then as we go. So, what do you think about Jack as a character? Uh, he's kind of he talks a lot. <laughs> yeah. uh, he's kind of he's kind of one dimensional. Besides, like <laughs> I'm bad, yeah. That's that's more or less a lot of his dialogue, uh, mm -hmm. and just whole shtick. Uh, and his his jokes his jokes make him interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, he's kind of hard to describe, in my opinion. Well, yeah, I mean, we kind of hit on it before. I mean, a little bit like a little bit of that evil Bruce Campbell. You know, there, it, he also reminded me a little bit of Quentin Tarantino, like a little, uh, and and certainly in his personality as well. Um, and then throw um, what was the one I was just thinking of? Uh, well, well, turkey. Throw turkey into the mix. Yeah, you. <laughs> he was a lot like that, except better. Yes. yes, but I mean, like the types of jokes—they weren't as crude, but they were similar. You know. <laughs> yeah, but that need to make a smart comment—or well, not smart, but you know, smart Alec uh, comment every time he killed someone or did something and. Some of them were very off color, and some of them were just bad puns. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and of course, there was also the introduction of our main hero mm -hmm. during that entire time, which was the sheriff, who had caught him at a traffic stop, which was actually kind of funny if you think about it. And um, and of course that vow by the uh, by our cartoony killer, and he really was cartoony even when he was uh, living. Even as a human. Uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but he had vowed revenge. Uh, so do you do you all consider uh, our protagonist a good strong lead? Um, he he worked for what the movie was. I mean, because the movie. It has moments where it kind of takes itself seriously, mm -hmm. but for the most part, we're all just screwing around. Uh, <laughs> so he, I thought he fit the movie pretty pretty well, and like the scenes where he's like killing people, like if they were. So I noticed something kind of interesting, like watching this again, like today, because when I saw Joe Bob's Red Christmas, I was in like a real like party mood, and I was like, "Yeah, get him." And then I watched it again, and when I watch it again today, um, I'm pretty tired and in a pretty, like, serious mood, and, like, I was just kind of thinking about, it's like, wow, some of these would be really terrible ways to kill people. <laughs> um, so, I think him being so, like, kooky and campy is what makes the movie, like, enjoyable. Um, like, they kind of try to do a similar thing in Sleepaway Camp 2, um, Except in Sleepaway Camp 2, like, the victim actors aren't like, whoa, what's going on? And, like, hamming to the camera, they're begging for their lives like they're in a real drama. So, uh, I would say that Jack Frost works so much better as a movie, like, because it has this, like, whole silly quality to it. And Jack really, like, focuses that in one spot. Mm -hmm. You could almost say that it's Sam, right? Is the sheriff? Yeah. Uh, you could say he's he's almost like the straight man uh, to all the craziness, you know? Correct. Uh, hmm? Yes. Yeah. I said correct, but then I yeah. yawned yeah. and died. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. and, uh, even though this uh, wasn't entirely something part of the plot, but uh, evidently the town was preparing for some winter celebration. Oh, uh, yeah, snowman! Uh, they, they even had a snowman making contest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
did you did you notice how uh, of course they li- they did the foreshadowing for later uh but uh, that the uh sheriff's kid always was making these disgusting uh things like the cookies and stuff mm. like that with stuff that probably weren't very edible right <laughs> yeah that's the big that's the big reveal of the movie it's so right. funny. <laughs> like uh, early in the movie we see his son is like here dad I made you oatmeal and it's just like this caustic looking greenish tar substance and he's like yeah thanks. okay well, when you find out what the secret ingredient is you know. <laughs> yeah, it's like eh, shit good thing you didn't eat that <laughs> uh, maybe the son is actually a serial killer uh, in training and uh he's trying to kill his father first just to you know just to try it out first you know <laughs> yeah, cop huh fuck you dad uh. <laughs> <laughs> See you like a little oatmeal. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. Uh, and he, of course, had his own little team of. Um, of course, the sheriff had his own little team of backups mm-hmm. uh, of incompetence, mm-hmm. and uh, and of course his family, and you have uh, all of the various friends around the town, all the targets, mm-hmm. so to speak. Right. Uh, for the various killings that happen. Uh, I believe Jack's first killing started in mm-hmm. the, uh, of course, when he changed over. But um, I'm trying to remember where his killing, what what was the second killing that he had, that Jack had? Wasn't it the father of the... Oh, no. It was the, uh, it was the kid on the sled. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The decapitation. Because the kid was bullying the other kid, and then he ended up tripping him out, and he got ran over by his sled. <laughs> well, Jack didn't do it because um, of the bullying. Jack did it because the, the bully's like, is this your snowman? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> well, all right. And he, like, smash it. He, like, smacks Jack's head off. Well, yeah. And so Jack, like, pushes him in the path of the sled. <laughs> But, oh, yeah. And the kid's like, uh, and, and the son's like, I didn't do it. The snowman pushed him. Uh, and in all fairness, I actually did not uh, have any problems with the uh, bully dying in that one. But that's, uh, but then again, I don't have much uh, forgiveness for bully characters in any mm-hmm. type of series. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, I think, uh, I think my favorite scene in. Uh, Rob Zombie's Halloween. Uh, that I have to type something. I'm sorry. Hold on a second. Uh, my favorite scene in Rob Zombie's Halloween is when like kid Michael Myers just ambushes that kid, the the bully in the woods. So I was I was down with that. Mm. Oh, man. And then also into the mix we have um, is. Would we call Stone the Ahab character in this one, or is he more just a <laughs> amused bystander? I can't really figure out. But you had Stone and Manners. He's like a like Chuck Norris parody. Kind Manners, of pretty much, yeah. Sort of like the ultra competent agent that can <laughs> kick anyone's ass and take news. The, the <laughs> accident was somewhat planned. Like it's yeah. just. Yeah, it was planned. Yeah. Um, yeah, the agent was the total dick character, though. <laughs> this so small true. Got me. Well, he he kind you of mellowed be. later. I liked when he started. You should be thinking us. Yeah. <laughs> he basically decided that Stone was worthless. He started giving him hell too, and that was kind of fun. <laughs> I did like how they were giving him coffee. As I mean, how throughout the movie you see the sheriff actually uh, doing little uh, little jabs because, of course, uh, as the FBI person, uh, the FBI guy has the ability to take over the whole investigation. Right. But the yeah, sheriff would just uh, do these little rebellions, like, "Oh no, no, you're not totally sealed off." Yes, I am. Well. No, because over here there was that hole in the fence that this guy left open. Over at this section, he's like, 
well, you could have told me that. Well, you never asked. It's <laughs> like, yeah, when they, yeah, they tore down that fence last year, last week. So it's just an open field. Meh. <laughs> that was like, oh, what is this scene? <laughs> or, like their, their bickering was kind of like, in, it was kind of like endearing, almost in a way, and how stereotypical it was. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, did you notice that he was um, he he wasn't offered coffee when uh, when the assistant was going around filling the coffee cups? <laughs> I did not notice that. Well, the assistant uh, was nothing really like him. Well, not many people liked him in that particular. And of course, I liked her. Uh, I liked her too. Whenever uh, 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 when everything was gone to panic, she, uh, uh, panic late, much later, she was like, okay. Which uh, which place do you want to do it at? Uh, your place or mine? Yours. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did forget the, that there was one kill before the lovers kill, which was the uh, one where uh, we got the Christmas tree kill. Hmm. Well, there were quite a few kills in this one. Um, oh, yeah. I think we missed, we missed the first one, actually, because after Jack melts and becomes a snowman, yeah. Uh, he leaves he leaves one of the guards alive. He's just like, I don't know what's going on. I'm gonna get out of here. Like I'm not mm -hmm. gonna stop and kill this guy. And they get a call. It's like, oh yeah, old man whatever. Like they found him dead and his face is oh, just, true. Like, frozen. Oh, yeah, right. The uh, the coroner. I, I like the coroner's character because he, <laughs> he 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 he's like there to describe the situation to the uh, to the sheriff. And uh, he he's uh, He's like, well, uh, they had to have snapped his neck back, and uh, you know, uh, and the way that he describes it next was kind of st stereotypical. It's like he was trying to reach for uh, for who or what might have killed him or something like that. You know. <laughs> Did you guys catch the little bit of dialogue? It's like, man, we used to steal apple. We used to steal apples from his orchard all the time <laughs> when we were kids. Yeah. And he was just known as like old man, whatever. Like even back then, apparently, nah, <laughs> he was like, like clearly he like was, what thirty five. Yeah, he, he was the guy that was disguised as all the monsters in every Scooby Doo episode. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, and his <laughs> shirt, like it. <laughs> Uh, his sheriff's deputies were uh, uh, kind of played those small town cops who uh, who really weren't trained as cops. They were just men who probably were just in the town that that said, "Okay, I'll do it," kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, because uh, at the Christmas tree, uh, tree ki uh, killing, uh, the the one guy was like, "Are you sure we shouldn't take uh, take her back to put her on display?" Uh. Well, yeah, they, they, they were very, they, <laughs> they were very incompetent not. deputies. I, I think it was more like, wasn't it like, what do we leave her up till after Christmas? I think that's <laughs> kind of course. I did kind of like that. I was like, what? Well, uh, the, the thing that I thought thought uh, thought to myself is like, well, she did end up being the Christmas tree star. <laughs> yeah, that was a, that was an earlier scene. It's like. When I was a little girl, I dreamed of becoming of being the angel on a Christmas tree, and her husband just looks at her like that's fucking weird. <laughs> that was so gratifying. <laughs> For some reason, yeah. it was just somebody said something crazy, and you know, for the first time in this movie, somebody's like, "What?" <laughs> Instead of just, "Well, yeah," and going with it. <laughs> um, there's a, there's actually a person in here credited as the name idiot. <laughs> that, that, that's the character name they gave them. <laughs> um. Anyway, at the end of that scene, did you catch like the two deputies? It's like let's go get some apples, and they just like wander off frame, and it's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, they were the comic relief initially, and the film probably didn't need any comic relief uh, <laughs> because it's already comic relief in general. <laughs> So ultimately, we get to the uh, uh, the couple killing. Um, so we don't even know whether the uh, the daughter has actually learned whether her parents have actually been killed yet or not. Which uh, th uh, that was another ki uh, kill. Uh, the father uh, with the axe. Yeah, 
But then there was the guy that discovered them, and then he started running all around trying to take out other snowmen later in the film. It was kind of funny. <laughs> I <laughs> love how, yeah, he's like, hey, the deputies are like, hey, Sheriff, there's, there's something going on outside. And he's like, what? <laughs> and they go back out there, and the guy is just like in a panic, like hitting all the snowmen from the contest. And the sheriff like side tackles him <laughs> like to stop to protect the snowmen. <laughs> I think what endeared me to the co uh, the coroner dude, uh, dude uh, was the fact that uh, uh, that after the father had been killed, he, he was explaining uh, uh, well uh, 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 how uh, how the axe didn't uh, didn't just you know. It, it, well, so Jack killed that guy hard. by shoving an axe down his throat, like whoomph, like in one shot, and the coroner is like, yeah. "Well, it'd be lacerations from trying to work it down," uh, but somebody took this and just rammed it right in there. It's like, huh. Shows you how strong I no didn't man. know I was interested in, but I'm happy to have learned. <laughs> so when you're talking about the couples scene, of course you had the, the, they get together to, of course, make out because in every uh, horror movie where you've got a killer, you've got to have the couple that makes out uh, so they can get killed. And uh, they have an interesting way of both killing them, especially the woman. And of course, I love the undressing scene. Yeah, uh, they had layers <laughs> of clothing to, uh, to take off, didn't they? It, it was taking them years to take those clothes off. <laughs> that was pretty wild. And then, of course, I thought it was kind of cute that they both had the same gray long johns on. Well, um, uh, <laughs> we're kind of we're kind of ping ponging around here. Um, so during that during the couple kill scene, so the dad goes outside and gets nailed with that axe, and mm -hmm. the mom like Jack figures out Jack learns that he can melt into a puddle and like yeah. go under doors and then reform, and so he kind of messes around with that in this scene, uh, and. You know, he kills this lady by... He, like, chokes her with... He, like, ties her to the tree and chokes her with Christmas tree lights. And then he is, like, just, like, smashing, like, ornaments, like, into her face. And yeah. then he, like, rams, like, the, the star from the top of the tree, like, into her skull and just, like, ties her to the tree. And it was... It would have been, like, pretty nasty if it wasn't accompanied by, like, really goofy music. And the lady oh. looks more surprised than in actual pain. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's well, yeah. a crummy looking snowman. Effectively went with here. Well, you and, didn't even show a lot of cut. They didn't even show a lot of cuts from the ornaments when he was smashing her face into it. It just looked yeah. like she was. He was just kind of gently just, just like uh, playing with her <laughs> until the last minute kill at the at the very end. <laughs> and uh, you notice like. When the deputies are doing like the cleanup, like they they're actually carrying the tree out because they want it done tire. <laughs> yeah, it, it reminds me a lot of the film. I think the early, actually, yes, it was earlier. The Steve Martin film Mixed Nuts, where they actually take one of the uh, people that they accidentally kill, hide him in the Christmas tree, and are taking him out to the docks to throw him out because that would be the easy way for people just not to see him. <laughs> this is a this is a comedy. It's uh, kind of a dramedy, uh, but um, I watched it again this year and found out it wasn't quite as much of a downer as I had originally thought it was. But there are definitely some screwball moments like that, and uh, there are two people who they were constantly ruining the Christmas tree of. And the two people decide at that moment, ah, you've got a Christmas tree. I guess it's time for us to ruin it. So they decide <laughs> to uh, go after it when they're trying to hide the body in the one Christmas tree. So, <laughs> But uh, that's what it reminded me of when they are talking about, let's carry it out this way and see if we can display it. I think, yeah, that was the one they were talking about, the joke of, like, we can display, should we display her or something like that. <laughs> So getting back to the uh, couple uh, couple uh, scene. So what happens is uh, um, the uh, the uh, the one kid. Uh, the, uh, the what was what's his name? Tommy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Tommy. He uh, while uh, the girl goes up 
uh, which uh, the girl, um, she just so happens to be one of the actresses who played in uh, 13 Ghosts. Um, Shannon Elizabeth, Shannon right? Elizabeth, yes. Yep. Yeah. One of her uh, first roles. Oh, I remember her boobs yeah. being a little bit bigger than that. So uh, <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, but uh, but uh, in any case. Well, this was like her first movie, so she probably grew like a little bit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But anyway, so the setup for this is so Shannon Elizabeth's character and this kind of dorky kid that we saw at the snowman competition uh, earlier. So she's like, Ew, let's sneak into the sheriff's house and do it. And he's like, oh, I don't know. And she kind of like makes him do it. And so they break into the sheriff's house where Jack is lurking around because Jack's after the sheriff. And the scene where like she starts to undress uh, and then it goes into this long montage of them just taking off, like, 17 layers of clothes <laughs> to, like, get to her underwear. And it's, uh, it's such a weird scene. Like, it was really funny, especially with, like, the really... How would you describe that music that they picked for this? <laughs> Kooky? Yeah. Well, you see... I never remember the music because I always picture the Benny Hill theme whenever it goes on. <laughs> you know, it's not too far off. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, uh, she goes up and uh, takes uh, uh, takes and starts to do her hair. And then she, uh, and while she's doing th uh, that, she gets piped uh, hyped, if I remember correctly, <laughs> into the wall. Uh, so she's she goes off to she she's like you know Come get me when you're ready, and she goes off to like take a bath or something. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And he's like, "Has anyone ready? I'd explode!" So he's getting like champagne, like he's putting ice yeah. in it. And um, she had said uh, to to get her a bottle of wine and a roaring fire uh, ready as she gets up. Yeah, and so that's what he was doing. Um, and so she's got music on, and she's, like, blow-drying her hair. And Jack kind of just shows up, and the kid is like, don't make me use this, man! And he's got, like, what was that, like, a knife sharpener or whatever? <laughs> <laughs> like, he had an ice pick, like, a minute ago. So yeah. he here's something, he thinks the sheriff's coming back home, and it's like, it's me, sir, Tommy. I'm not a burglar. <laughs> you see, I always thought that it was this, that Jack was hiding in the freezer when they originally showed it. That was a good yeah. take out, yeah. And it, and you know that they were that he was going to somehow like attack from within when uh, he used the ice to cool down the uh, champagne, but it was a fake out, which was really cool. I liked how they did that, and for some reason, it still fools me every damn year. I mean, I had seen I had seen this movie like not a week and a half ago, and I thought he was going to come out of the and I still thought he was going to come out of the freezer. <laughs> yeah, I kind of thought that too uh, too because uh, there was just too much. There was uh, a carrot. There was too much the carrot and freaking yeah. coals. Yeah, uh, there was too much snow in the freezer for oh. it just to be stuff in the freezer, you know. Yeah, there was a there was a fun kind of thing too. Like initially, like Jack didn't have like eyes or a nose, and uh, like the sheriff, the sheriff's son actually puts like the coals in and like carves a mouth. Hmm. So the sheriff's son pretty much gives Jack a face. I thought which... it was kind of interesting while he was carving uh, the, the snowman that uh, it, you saw the mouth move like it had teeth. It does have teeth. We see that later. Uh, <laughs> yes, later, definitely. <laughs> uh, so who knows what would have happened if the bullies hadn't shown up at that specific moment. <laughs> mm. But oh, anyway, least, so... The, uh, at least it's not snowballs like they have in yeah. the second one. Or, or like the joke that they keep uh, bringing up. <laughs> oh my god. Ugh. We only got one of them this time, but uh, it was a groaner. <laughs> that that uh, joke is repeated several times throughout. <laughs> well, to me, I like the line that he says right uh, right after he's like boned the chick. 
Um, uh, he, he's like, Was it good for you? you? <laughs> and there's like a faint smile as like blood pours out of her mouth. And it's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> Well, yeah, that that scene was kind of disturbing in and of itself because yeah. there's a bath that that she feels like is already prepared for her, and that was an overly scream queen moment too. She was screaming for quite some time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So she. Uh, so anyway, uh, doing the thing in the kitchen, the the kids like stand back, and then he like runs up to the snowman and tries to like ice pick the snowman, and the, and Jack's just like, the "Fuck was that?" And Jack can, like, shoot icicles out of his arms, and he's like, hey, cool, I can do that. Uh, so I, I really appre- I really enjoyed that scene, just because of that little moment. It's like, hey, well, what do you know? <laughs> uh, and so anyway, uh, he goes after the girl. Um, he, he can melt into water, and so he, like, fills the bathtub. So she's, like, taking a bath in him, and you see, like, the carrot, like, float up. <laughs> And all of a sudden, like, the tub just, like, freezes. And, and she's like, Tommy, not here. <laughs> <laughs> How little did she know? Oh, it's, it's, <laughs> oh, it's so hard to describe. Uh, so, at f- so I didn't actually notice the kind of sexual assault angle on the scene <laughs> until Joe Bob Briggs pointed it out. Um, but you know, it just looks like like Jack resolidifies, and suddenly she's like, you know, partially in this snowman, and he's just like, ah, ha, 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 like shaking her and like bashing her head into the wall, into the bathtub mm-hmm. walls, and she just looks like again more surprised than anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> and I was like, what the hell is going on? And then Joe Bob was like, you know, did you notice that the carrot is missing from his face in that scene? And I was like, ah! Uh, yeah. <laughs> it is. And they, they take a moment to actually show him, like, putting it back on his face, like, <laughs> afterward. Mm-hmm. And it was like, ah. Uh. And he makes that comment about Christmas coming early. Yeah. Yep. yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're... <laughs> I guess Christmas came early this year. He really delivers yeah. it like that too. Like the character is like so. Like, eh. You know was that's it, it was his whole performance. For you as it was for me. Uh, <laughs> well, the character really was a cartoony villain. I mean, from from like I say, from the very beginning of his first appearance as a human being to his character as a killer snowman, he, he was not a uh, full fledged character he was as you said it, well i would say two dimensional yes and flowers he's kind of uh did anybody see scott tenorman in the one south park episode where he is like the joker like at the amusement <laughs> park like they basically did like a killing joke parody instead of the joker they had scott tenorman like he sounded like the line reads they do for insane version of Scott Tenorman. It's like, tell them what they've won, Jimbo. Mm-hmm. Like, kind of like that. <laughs> so cartoony is a very good descriptor. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, I do think that uh, Turkey is a good comparison. I would not even be surprised if the creators of Thanks Killing were inspired by Jack Frost. That would make uh, a lot of sense. Because they, they mm-hmm. do have a lot of similarities uh, as far as that, the one-liners, the the cheap design mm-hmm. of the uh, character, uh, the really simplistic goals <laughs> that they mm-hmm. have. That's just uh, it's just how it is. I mean, they're just killers. They're evil. Uh, that's all you really need to know. I mean, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> what what more do you really need? Actually, you know, they, they're killing everybody. <laughs> Jack Frost is about as expressive as an emoji too, which I enjoy. <laughs> oh, what was that in the background? Huh? Oh, I heard like a clicking sound. <laughs> Sorry. Well, um, so I didn't get a whole lot of sleep. <laughs> we got through all of the uh, couples kills, all the wackiness. Mm-hmm. No. 
Did from I there? I think. I don't think anyone even finds them. Yeah, no. I, th I don't think they really do. I, I think they go rec because during that time they're working on trying to get everybody at like the uh, town center gathered together because of the uh, well uh, curfew that's been encouraged strongly. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's probably one of the worst curfews enforcements I've I've ever seen. It's like. Yeah, well, we really can't force you, but strongly encourage that you uh, don't go out. Um, <laughs> so, so they all like stay inside, and then that's when the ruckus comes out, and the one witness to the uh, first couple kill uh, is going out and whacking like every snowman he can find. <laughs> 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 and and really, that's I'm just remembering start. that scene. Sorry. <laughs> and that's really where they start. Uh, where they where the sheriff actually gets to see the real Jack Frost snowman at the end. Uh, as we get closer to that, uh, he makes his appearance. Mm -hmm. And I just I just still have to keep laughing at the that side tackle that he does on the guy hitting the snowman. Oh, yeah. It's like so rough and excessive. <laughs> well, I, I love that. I love that character's involvement in that. It really adds the, the comedic elements. Of course, the deputies <laughs> both end up uh, dying somewhere along the way. One of them ends up like going out to the... Uh... Oh, spoilers, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of them ends up going uh, going out to one of the crime scenes early on and gets killed where Jack drives his vehicle into town and the other one ends up picking up the girl and then he gets killed later on I think uh, was it in the jail he dies uh, I don't remember where the other deputy dies but I know yeah. they end up holding up in the jail not long after that scene yeah and, uh, like so the ever deputy and like the dispatcher lady like they go off somewhere and I'm not actually sure what happened to them I think they just go and bone each other <laughs> that was the impression I got <laughs> yeah, why not? it tastes good for them but because they ended up locking the one guy up in jail mm -hmm. and uh, they all ended up barricaded up there against Jack uh, where they finally come clean uh, about what was going on. Well, yeah, and then and when they realized that they can't exactly kill him uh, per and se. It, and of course, Stone's alternate, like, well, we just want to capture him, and yeah. uh, because uh, we want him alive, and uh, you know, you guys and are kind of like, just like whatever. And <laughs> like nerd that came with him, um, who helped develop the chemical that turns him into a snowman in the first place is just is like you know we just want to see what it's like you know he's like he's like so hyped for the idea of um just being immortal using this stuff using these chemicals that he completely seems to not understand it's like no this is bad like he's an invincible serial killer it's like but but i want to like poke at him and ask him questions. It's like, no, that won't work. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that does lead to his death. It's like, wait, I have to know. What's it like? You've become immortal. The dream of every man you know, since the beginning of time. How does it feel? It feels cold. <laughs> like, yeah, that's a cool kill later on uh, as, they, uh, as they go further on. And Jack actually does develop the teeth for that scene. Yeah, I bite stones out of, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, which was, actually, no, it's worse than that because he develops the teeth. Well, we'll get to that because that's, uh, that's, at, that's towards the very end. But yep. The last act the, of this movie moves pretty quick, so it kind of blurs but, together. Yeah, in the jail, they find out that he's weak to teeth. <laughs> when they hit him with a blow dryer and he's kind of bothered by it. So they come up with this idea to just set off a bunch of hairspray and uh, blow up the jail with him in it to try and take him out. And then they had the, and the idea about the furnace. 
didn't yeah, they? they? Yeah, they try to they try to blow so they blow up the jail. Um and I like how Jack reforms kind of like the T one thousand. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in a pretty clear knockoff, but it was still pretty funny. And so they're barricaded. It's like the community center or the church or something. Is it the church? Yeah, I think it was actually the church. Yeah, and then and that one. Yeah. They make a big deal about you know. Oh yeah, we're gonna go turn on the furnace, and like they explicitly show the furnace. <laughs> and so Jack Frost is trying to like break in there, and the idea they have is they go get a bunch of hair dryers, and they basically like turn the hair dryers on him and like force him into the furnace, and they're like, "Yeah, yeah. we got him." Mm -hmm. uh, not good enough because he reconstitutes and takes out Stone and the doctor that Stone came with, who was all you know excited. Oh, the, the, the doctor yeah. is actually Stone. The agent yeah, Manners is agent. Manners is the agent. Yeah, Stone is the doctor. Yeah. Oh well, damn. Uh, and the way that they did with the uh, with with Stone is that uh, he then s tries to sneak out by. Uh, uh, basically using Stone's body as a uh, skin, basically. Mm -hmm. When it doesn't work, he just has him vomit him back up. And uh, that was he pretty, comes after. That was pretty cool. Actually, uh, so there's a Dragon Ball Z villain that basically does the same thing to somebody, like in the anime. And it reminded me of that... Uh, so, like, the guy, like, the doctor, like, staggers out, and they're like, oh, okay. Oh, good, you're okay. And he's like, ah, fine. And it's like, he's very obviously being, like, puppeted. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. And then there's, like, this really unconvincing, like, effect that they have, where he, like, vomits Jack out, like, with, like, a... You can tell there's, like, a hose, like, right behind the actor, like, <laughs> as yeah. he, like, throws Jack up. So well, pretty kooky. And then they find out later, uh, just not that much later, about uh, the secret ingredient in the oatmeal, which tells me that the child really wants to kill his parents, <laughs> which is antifreeze. And antifreeze turns out to be. <laughs> Didn't he say something about he thought it would keep it warm? Yeah, yeah keep it warm. I thought it, it would help cold. you stay warm, Daddy. It's like, are you fucking. <laughs> And he just kind of lets it go. He's like, uh, I, I, your heart was in the right place. It's like, what? No! <laughs> it is yeah, intelligent. kind of a Stepford family, don't, aren't they? <laughs> I mean, they're there, they're there for, the, for the plot. I uh, this kid's related to the cops I met in Charles City the other day. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, oh, Jack, Jack comes after them in their car, and they... You know, the oatmeal is, like, in, like, the ashtray or something, and, like, Jack comes in contact with it, and it just horribly burns him, mm -hmm. like, right away, and, like, he can't repair the damage. Mm. Yeah, that's when they get the idea to uh, fill a pickup truck uh, flatbed filled with uh, antifreeze while the sheriff is distracting Jack. In hopes to uh, eventually jump out onto the flatbed. It almost looks like Jack takes him out, but uh, apparently not. <laughs> they threw him out the window. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, apparently Jack can just do the icicle thing, like, wherever, because he has the sheriff, like, pinned up against the wall, and, just, like, the icicle, like, starts coming out of his chest and, like, stabbing yeah. the sheriff, and sheriff pretends to die. Before, like, surprise! And he, like, pushes Jack out the window, and they land right in the antifreeze. And Jack's meltdown is pretty gross. Um, it is. Because it's, like, the snow, and then, like, the clear <laughs> melting flesh tones that they used. It was like, ugh. But they do manage to set up, as they bury the antifreeze, a sequel. Of course. Yeah, I Which like they... how... They do it in, like, consecrated ground, too, and, like, the fucking priest is there. <laughs> but, and they do set up the sequel, well, which is actually does happen, believe it or not. All a I tropical remember, island. All I remember about 
the sequel is like the ending where it's like that really bad like stereotype. It's Godzilla. Oh, so, he actually but it's Jack Zilla. In the in the sequel, he has snowball children. <laughs> it, it's it's really terrible, but at the same time, it has a higher budget, and you can see that they have more fun with it. Oh, they had a lot more fun with that. I, I just uh, it's just so long as you know what you're getting into. I think plot wise, it's actually. A fun film. I think they have fun with this one, or they certainly seem to. No, this one, this one turned out to be pretty good because it has, it kind of, I mean, yeah, it has this like weird, goofy tone, but it has kind of just enough takes itself seriously moments where you can kind of, you know, if this was just like a serial killer and not a snowman, you know, this movie would still work. So, with that being oh, said, a uh, lot of we've... it would still work. Any other thoughts about the plots or characters? Uh, it gives you what you need and what you expect on the box. <laughs> well, then let's move on to special effects. Um, of course, to me, I think that the most expensive special effect was the death scene of Jack at the very beginning of the film. Not not the CG effect, but the actual melting effect. I thought that was pretty good for uh, practical effects, as far as they go. <laughs> oh yeah, when I when I saw that on Joe Bob the other week, I think I actually went, "Wow." <laughs> <laughs> I think so too. Um, I didn't exactly expect him to melt into the fucking snow. And then all of a su uh, sudden, he like broke out from the snow, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and did you notice that a lot of the snow was definitely not snow, but felt <laughs> throughout the oh, movie? <laughs> yeah, that was that was a fun thing that Joe Bob pointed out. So they went up to I think this was shot around Big Bear, and so they went to Big Bear in the winter, and it was like the first winter in like something like forty years where there was no snow. Right. And so they had to, like, ship in all the snow. I think they said <laughs> 70 on some of the days. It's like... <laughs> Damn. Yeah. yeah. Another oh. thing I, I think I saw stated... I don't know... I didn't really catch this, but I saw it stated. I wonder if y'all caught it. That apparently they used wind effects throughout the film, even though uh, there's really no wind in most of the film. Hmm. Huh. Yeah. I thought the snowman costume was entertaining. I mean, you got a, basically a cloth snowman costume. Right. And uh, it, it was very campy, but at the same time, I thought it was a fun, uh, a fun little costume. And the icicle effects were cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think so. Um, I don't really... I thought the cutting off of the heads was pretty cool. <laughs> uh, and, and the frozen body at the beginning. I, I do thought, I think that was a pretty cool corpse effect that they did. <laughs> yeah. That, that was pretty cool freaky looking it was kind of uh, 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 kind of like how Jack Nicholson looked at the end of The Shining so <laughs> <laughs> well, they're very I'm trying to find a polite word for fake phony. Looking. they're very phony severed heads <laughs> well this is a very phony movie for the most part so <laughs> I mean, it works for it, though. What about the music? Uh, Does it have music? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Of course it had music. You know, it just yeah, had, yeah. like, crazy Christmas music. Mm -hmm. uh, which, I guess, goes, just goes to... I guess that goes to show you... Because uh, some people say, if you're noticing the, mu the music in a movie... Yeah. Jesus. If you're noticing the music in a movie... I've had, like... Three hours of sleep, by the way. Sorry. Uh, if you're noticing the music in a movie, then the music has failed. 
because the music is supposed to enhance like the scenes and the use of music in this pretty solid so it made some of those it made su such nasty kills like funny and palatable yeah i did think that was interesting to have the happy kill music for some yeah of the without it being distracting too <laughs> So happy kill, happy kill music is a great uh, descriptor for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, did any of you guys have anything else you wanted to say before we start going into scenes and and uh, because this is a killing movie, favorite kills, obviously. All right, then let's go into that. Uh, let's start with Jake. Mm -hmm. uh, what would be your favorite scene and favorite kill of the movie? Hmm. It's hard to say. Um, uh, I don't know that anything jumps out at me. I honestly can't think of anything that really rose above. I can think of a couple that I would rate lower, but not much really jumps out at me. <laughs> so, so no favorite scene. <laughs> not really, no. I mean, maybe the opening. I liked that. It was creative and twisted, so maybe that is a favorite scene. Hmm. All right, well, uh, Dustin, what about your favorite scene and kill? Whew, it's kind of hard to pin down. Um, I've been thinking about it for a while, too, because a lot of this movie is just really enjoyable. Uh, I, think I, I think I'd maybe go with the scene in the kitchen where, you know, like, just the whole, like, start to finish, like, progression of it, uh, where he's, he uses the ice pick to chip some ice out of the, free, out of the freezer, then he hears somebody, and he goes to arm himself, and he reaches into a drawer. Instead of just taking the ice pick that he was just using, he reaches into a, into a drawer, he pulls out, like, an egg beater, he pulls out, what was the other thing? It was, like, a, it was like a spatula, and then he pulls out what looks like a knife sharpener, but, you know, I, I called the ice pick earlier, I made a mistake. Um... Uh, and like this, he sees a snowman, like an actual <laughs> snowman, like appear in front of him. And he's like, hey, man, back off. Don't make me use this. And it's like, what? What are you going to do with that? Like, it's not even sharp. And he tries to stab the snowman. And the snowman's just like shooting icicles at him then. Like, uh,. I said like far too many times, but you know, I, I just enjoy that whole that part of the scene. Like the thing in the bathtub eh, made me feel kind of dirty. I didn't like that, but uh, uh, what about your favorite kill? Was that your favorite kill? Ah, uh, probably because it had like it was still it was still silly, but it had like a little bit of like an artistic thing to it too. Because uh, mm. after like he shoots the icicle into the guy's head. Um, uh, it cuts to the other side of the door and it's just, there's just like a bloody like icicle sticking out of like a Merry Christmas card. <laughs> like I think right through the Merry Christmas. So it was almost like a artistic statement. <laughs> <laughs> so well, I, I enjoyed uh, that a lot. Dave, uh, your favorite kill slash scene? I would have to say the bathroom scene. Uh, I... I I, I guess there's something about about that particular scene, especially since she has a kind of a a, a bath scene in Thirteen Ghosts, um, and Jen and Elizabeth is just very beautiful, uh, um, to say the least. In this one and and the next, and uh, Thirteen Ghosts, so. I would have to say, uh, uh, say that scene. For some reason, I uh, just love the lines right after. Uh, <laughs> so, so is that your favorite the, kill as well? Uh, that would probably be my favorite kill as well, too. <laughs> uh, the I think bathtub, you just like Shannon Elizabeth? 
the bathtub was my favorite kill, but I thought that was just creative uh, how they did that. But my favorite scene was at the beginning where uh, the guy is telling the story to the kid. It just is hilarious. Uh, I, I just really have a mm-hmm. difficulty not laughing at that scene. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I guess that covers what we had. Uh, does anybody else have anything else before we go into our outros? Um, if you can, if you have access to it on Shutter, uh, check out the Joe Bob's Red Christmas episode of Jack Frost, because uh, he has a lot of really interesting, like, information about the movie. But I tried to share a little bit of here, but I don't remember everything, and I didn't really want to steal his thunder. So if you have access to Shutter, um, go check out the episode on this, and you'll learn a lot of fun stuff about this movie. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, Dustin, why don't you start us off? Oh, well, uh, I'm Dustin, also known as the Crypt of Horrors, here on uh, YouTube and Twitter and Instagram as the Crypt of Horrors. So I collect anything related to horror that I can get my hands on. And yeah, it's, it's pretty much it. So we keep trying to do projects and we keep somewhat failing because we go to school too and... Oof, it's a lot. (laughs) But uh, yeah, I I like posting on Instagram. I'm very active on Twitter. And uh, my channel should have some more videos of just me showing off like the cool stuff I found over the past like a couple months. Uh, Because hunting for used movies has been pretty wild. So plus with Shout Factory having a bunch of their titles go out of print. uh, that was kind of a thing we were doing for a while, just like tracking down out of print titles. And we succeeded with most of them, except for Ghoulies 1 and 2, which uh, I had my order canceled because they ran out in <laughs> some of these places. It wasn't great. But I'm uh, glad to have that Empire set. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there is a... Uh, at some point, like, my own horror spinoff is going to launch. Like, I have, like, a bunch of people, like, willing to to come do it. Um, And to my delight, like, one of the... There's a crocodile scientist who wrote the book Numenwari, which is what the movie Dark Age is based off of, and he's willing to come talk with me uh, about reptiles and horror movies at some point. So I'm excited for that, if we ever find the time. So, yeah, a lot, uh, lot going on in this new year. Perhaps too much. <laughs> I look forward to seeing some of that in the future on your show. Uh, so, Jake, uh, tell us about yourself. Hi, I'm Good Bookie Jake. I uh, live here in Central Virginia, where I am also a big-time um, collector of uh, fan, viewer, reader, whatever, of all sorts of media. And, uh, of course, going headstrong through award season focus right now is on certain types of films that are very different from the one we reviewed tonight. But <laughs> but um, at, whoa. And I'm dealing with crazy cats who have been tearing up a storm uh, all night long. Mm-hmm. Um and a bit of news on my own channel. I do have my own YouTube channel, uh, Kotobuki Jake, that is based on nature and the natural world. I have done a pathetic job of updating it, but it is there, and there will be videos. I also frequently guest on Septum Sin vs. the World. Uh, news on those, one item I got for Christmas was a new computer. Another item that I got along with that was the uh, software that Septum uses to edit videos. So I will have a much freer hand to put up my own homemade videos, and hopefully that will mean more of them in the new year. So (laughs) we will see. Well, speaking of, uh, I am Septum Sen of Septum Sen versus the world. Uh, I... uh, took on the host of this kind of last minute, so I apologize. My, I would normally have had notes. Uh, but as far as things go, we are a channel that covers physical media. We have uh, various things. Our, our normal uh, is usually three videos a week. 
But this week is special. We have had a video every day this week. Uh, we have one uh, Monday through Friday, actually, uh, with a, a couple of new features, one of them uh, being the strolling series where I take 10 items from my collection, uh, starting uh, alphabetically and moving down uh, to just uh, give a more in-depth look at the uh, items in my collection. <clears throat> and of course, I started with uh, the criterion section and uh, we'll be uh, doing uh, different ones for TV, anime, and regular movies. Uh, the... Uh, Standard pickups and releases are, of course, weekly as goes. We are uh, up into awards week, uh, or actually awards month, because with luck, the Oscars will uh, do their nominees Monday of next week, and we'll be full blast into that. Uh, we also have a thing on Thursdays uh, for the next few months called the Anhedinia Project, which is a... Uh, deep dive into all the films of Anhedinia films every Thursday. And uh, then, of course, uh, there is our NIS project, which will be pushed till after Oscar season. Finally, I do some uh, work and guesting on Inside Movies Galore, where we hope to... Uh, do an additional uh, talk maybe next week uh, that we've been working on in a while. Should be uh, able to. And uh, also, I help run the schedule. So uh, the next one up and the last in our uh, holiday uh, romp has been lost at the moment. So what I will do is hand it back to Dave where I will look it back up again, and then after he is done, I will announce our next video. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is David Streggy, and I run Inside Moves Glory, but I run it also with all of you um, fine feathered friends of mine, uh, where we... <laughs> Where we uh, talk about mov uh, movies uh, of all kinds and uh, discuss them amongst each other. Uh, but I also go on and do my own reviews on Delusions of Grandeur. And uh, also do some of my own collection videos. I just did a small one just the other day, day trying to get back into the curriculum of doing things. And uh, going about and organizing my stuff. Uh, and uh, hope, oh, hopefully I'll be able to start my um, reviewing back up again, uh, again, just haven't found the energy to do so. Uh, but uh, I definitely have a lot of films uh, that uh, I have planned to uh, go on and review. Uh, so uh, definitely check those out once those come out on Delusions of Grandeur's uh, YouTube uh, channel. Check out um, Inside Movies Galore channel. And stay tuned for an exciting year. As um, next uh, uh, next week, what is the film for next week again? Uh, well, from the director of Die Hard 2 and Cliffhanger, we have uh, Rennie Harlan's Devil's Pass, based on a true story. And, I'm uh, of, and that is Moe's pick uh, that uh, came up. So that will end our uh, holiday uh, viewing. And uh, hopefully by next week, we will have uh, the rest of January and all of February uh, taken care of, so I will have that schedule for you then. Definitely. So um, stay tuned uh, for more um, exciting discussions by us, and uh, I'm definitely going to be working on getting a, a lot of our older stuff uh, that, that we've done up on Spotify so that you can uh, listen to them uh, there, and the ones that I have put up on Spotify, I will start to actually take down uh, so you will actually will, will not be able to see or listen to, uh, to them unless you actually listen to Spotify so 
bear that in mind, folks. And uh, we will uh, definitely uh, um, have some more surprises down the road. We'll be guys. back. <laughs> we always come we'll back. We'll be back. Yes. All right. yes. Are we still on? <laughs>